God this morning, isn't it? All right, well, let's all stand. We're going to go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. And as we, as we pray, we want to remember Brother Jones this morning. And while he's still in the hospital, and uh, just pray for the Lord's will to be done there. We also want to remember Mike and Anna. Uh, Anna is, had a, uh, an infection, and she's going to have to come back here and take care of that kidney stone here. And then Mike broke his foot. And his sons are laughing. I, I, asked, I asked Nathan the other day if he wanted to be a deacon. He said, no. <laughs> but uh, all seriousness, these are serious things. And I'm glad that we have a God that we can go to and pray for people. And uh, as a church family, we're going to do that this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God's blessing on the, on the, uh, the meeting here this morning. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day and for what you've given us, Lord, and for the opportunity to be here in church this morning. And Lord, I pray that you would be with Brother Jones and help him. I pray for Roseanne and for the family. And God, I ask that your will would be done. Lord, our desire is for him to keep his foot. And we pray to that end. Lord, help his, help his spirits. Help him to keep his eyes on you. Lord, I also think of Mike and Anna this morning, each one facing their own physical issues. They didn't plan this when they went away on vacation. But Lord, I pray that you would help them during this time. Lord, we also ask that you would meet with us here this morning as we've gathered together to worship you through the singing of these great hymns and the preaching of thy word. Lord, we ask that you would be with the seniors that we seek to honor here this morning and help them as they continue on in life and may it be a life that will honor and glorify thee. Lord, I ask that if there's anybody here that doesn't know you as their Savior, we pray that today would be the day of salvation. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take our hymn books, please. Open up to hymn number 21. Brother Mike's going to come and lead us. Nathan. Let's all sing out now. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching.
good singing this morning. Let's turn on over to page number 121. 121. Bring them in. We'll sing all three verses. Artis the shepherd's voice I hear out in the desert dark and drear calling the sheep who've gone astray far from the shepherd's fold away bring them in bring them in bring them in from the fields of sin bring them Good to be in church this morning. Good crowd this morning. Thank you for being here. Hope this message and ser service will be a blessing to you. Just like to remind you of some things that's going on in the life and ministry of the Spring Creek Baptist Church. And of course, today we are honoring our seniors and I'd like to remind you in between the services, there are a couple tables out there, uh, some for the seniors and then uh, also for cupcakes, and everybody's invited to go over there. And uh, just be a blessing to the seniors and uh, just maybe even encourage them, uh, spend some time in prayer with them if you would like. But we just want to be a blessing to them. And uh, so don't forget that. Tomorrow night begins Vacation Bible School. It's beautiful in here. A lot of work has been done and we're excited about I'm excited about it and was just, I enjoyed yesterday. I, I, I'm not, Jackie, I'm not a decorator. I'm glad I did not glue my fingers together. I, I, my, my artistic ability involves stick figures. You understand? That, that is my level of artistic ability. But it was fun in here. I, I just enjoyed seeing people get to work. And all of this is so that we can give the gospel to young people. That's what all of this is for. And so I'm excited about it, and so uh, don't forget those things that are coming up. July the 6th, 1030, we have family soul winning. We'll meet over in the fellowship hall, and then we'll go out and uh, knock on some doors, invite folks to church, try to tell people about the Lord, and it'll be a good day here. And then also at 2 o'clock, we're having our church picnic, and that will be over at the Mount Olive Park on, on West Brooks, Brook Street, uh, there is a sign-up sheet available, and uh, so please help us out with that. And of course, we want to remember to continue to pray for the Jones family and uh, pray for the Infantes. And the, the, God's in charge of all of this. We understand that. But just, just let these people know that they belong to a praying church, if you don't mind doing that. Send a text. Send a card. I know today cards aren't popular, but please let them know that they're part of a church family that is praying for them. Well, at this time, we're going to go ahead and recognize our seniors, and um, when, I was, when I was in school, I could not wait until I graduated, and then when I graduated, I didn't really know what to do next. 
always, but it's a confusing time, but it's an exciting time because a chapter has closed and another chapter is about to open. And so we've, uh, we've asked our seniors to come and uh, they're going to testify a little bit and we have a gift for them and uh, we just want to honor them this morning. So Emily, would you come up here please? was Christian, so I grew up in a Christian household, and my life was, my life was mainly between church and school, and my school was a Christian school as well, so I grew up under the, that, that loving family who loves God, and I had my aunt and uncle there with us for a while too, and I know they love God, and I'm very glad that I was able to see that in them. Um, growing up, I still kind of am, I became very fearful in, very, in middle school afraid of everything and I knew yeah I know God could take that fear from me but but for some reason I guess I just wouldn't let him even right now I'm a little scared but I know that God has got that one verse that I have fallen in love with is second Timothy 1 7 for God hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind Amen. Amen. God God doesn't give me that spirit of fear and I know that if God doesn't give me the spirit of fear then that means the devil does. And I don't want the devil to influence me. So I try to um, keep that per- keep that verse in my head so I know that God can give me that. When, when I'm afraid, I do feel a little crazy, you know. I don't have that sound mind. But I know that God can give me that sound mind. Amen. Um, I think um, I'm also... I finished high school back in March, and my graduation was, I think it was back in June, but when I finished school, I finished early, yeah, but when I finished, I I didn't know what I was going to do with my life, I was just like, okay, well, I'm too scared, I'm too dumb to do anything, um, but, but then my aunt came to visit, and she kind of encouraged me to find something to do, and I decided to come with her up here to North Carolina just for like a small vacation, <laughs> just to get away, you know, see things, um, you know, get out, get outside of my comfort zone. Mm. Um, and God has opened doors for me to start going to college here. So I had started um, summer courses and I am taking a phlebotomy class and hopefully one day in the future, I will be able to do more with that. Amen. Andrew, come up. He's tall. (laughs) Not the first time I heard that one. (laughs) Well, I'd like to start off with a verse that just kind of speaks to me, that being Psalm 73, 26. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Pretty much just saying that no matter how much I think I got things under control, he's the one really just let me have that feeling, but he's doing it all. But yeah, I'd also like to thank everybody for supporting me, loving me, especially all of y'all in particular, my parents, grandparents, because... They did sacrifice a lot for my school's tuition. But yeah, Uh, my plans as of now would be looking at the Coast Guard, see see what I can do there, and potentially build a career off of that. But on top of that, I'm just overall thankful that I got to grow up in a good Christian environment with my family, churches, school, all of that, and Really, I just want to thank all of y'all for loving and supporting me. All right. Adriana. Uh, 
I apologize, I'm a little bit of a yapper. Okay. I would like to say thank you to the church, uh, Miss Missy, preacher, and Miss Chelsea for helping us put the senior day together. All of the seniors really do appreciate you. Um, also, thank you to my grandparents for helping me put it together. Thank you so much. <laughs> appreciate it. Um, it's hard to believe that I started going to SCPC five years ago. Um, I feel most of you know I come with my grandparents. Hey! Um, they are truthfully my biggest supporters. I do have to brag on them, though. It's just strange. Um, when I was 13, there were some legal and safety concerns that, um, in the end, placed me in their care. Through the years, they put up with my bunk moments, the dicey delays, um, my endless yapping, my teenage girl attitude moments, if you know, you know, the happy ones and the ones that I wish to forget. The Little Mermaid should not be turned into a musical. There's a lot of people I could thank for making an impact on my life, so I just wanted to thank the church as a whole for being my family and my rock throughout my years of high school. I got saved at the age of 13, coming out of a household that was toxic and not religious whatsoever. I had a basic understanding of prayer and that there was a God because of weekend visits with my grandparents, but I didn't truly know God. I battled with the idea, if an almighty God exists, then why did he allow my childhood to be like that? I chose to seek counsel and talk to my father's youth leader at his church. Um, and through him, I ended up realizing, um, in order to see the light of things, you have to go through a hard part. You can't help people without going through something to be able to connect to them. Um, so God definitely puts battles in your place to make sure that your faith is truly there. So, um, from my favorite book in the Bible, Proverbs 19, says to seek counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in the latter end. So I guess it did the right thing. Um, yeah, I came to realize that these challenges were in place for my life to overcome so that I could help others. And you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel if you don't get through the traffic first. Um, as I move forward in my life journey, I plan on attending Western Carolina in Homely, North Carolina in the fall. As you can tell, I'm not a big sports fan. Um, that's the reason I quit. Um, I plan on majoring in communications with a focus on public relations and advertising. I leave in August, and my favorite verse is Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made unto God. Um, I'm a very big prayer warrior. I feel like um, having a relationship with God and talking to him, especially on those battles at home, um, is definitely important, especially on those long drives when people are really getting on your nerves in traffic. Um, just pray. Just pray. Anyway, um, thank you all for everything that you've done for me, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.
We'll sing all two verses. All two verses. We'll sing both verses of what a day that will be. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come.
been singing. We got one more song for you this morning. Turn on over to page number 202. Page 202, Amazing Grace, very familiar but powerful song. We'll sing all four verses. On that fourth verse, if you would drop off and we'll sing a cappella on that fourth verse. Let's get us started. sing out on that last verse. This morning, let's be faithful to our Lord. Amen. Tommy, would you lead us in a word of prayer, please?
would take the word of God, please open up to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 16, please. It's good to be in church this morning, amen? Proverbs chapter 16, and if you're able to, please stand for the reading of the word of God. Proverbs chapter 16, verse number 9 says, A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. I want you to take note of that last expression, the Lord directeth his steps. And I want to preach on this unusual subject, brush your teeth. How many brushed your teeth this morning? Don't raise your hand. I am not a dentist. I'm not trying to be a dentist this morning. I, uh, there's a reason behind this. Father, we thank you for this day and for what you've given us, Lord, and for the opportunity to be in church. Lord, I pray that you would uh, just speak to our hearts here this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. you. may be seated. I'm thinking about brushing our teeth this morning. Let me tell you where I got it from. Back in Pennsylvania, the gentleman that, that led the, the singing up there, he was also the, the Sunday school uh, teacher up there, and uh, he was telling a story about when he was younger and he was trying to find God's will for his life. And he went to his dad and he asked his dad, I don't know what to do next. Have you ever been there before? I don't know what to do next. So his dad asked him, what is the next thing that you're supposed to do? And Martin said, brush my teeth. Now, that, now think about this. When we are trying to find God's will for our lives, and we see it as this, this big, grand thing, we're trying, to, we're trying to decipher God's direction because the Scripture says in verse number 9, the Lord directeth His steps. So we're trying to find out what is God's will for my life? What's that big thing? thing and really what we need to do is boil things down and look at it in simpler terms and do those things that we know we are supposed to do. We're to brush our teeth. There are things that we know that are the will of God. And if we're going to think about the will of God in these grand terms, you know, uh, uh, this is what I want to do in my life. Or we may say, I believe this is what God wants me to do with my life. And sometimes we hit that, that roadblock and we just don't know what that big thing is. And instead of looking for that big thing, what we need to do is do those things that we know we are all supposed to do. We need to brush our teeth. And we talked about this a little bit in Sunday school. I believe that God has what we may term as the, the general will of God. These are the things that, that God wants all of us to do. And I'm, I'm beginning, I'm starting off on this foot God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I believe that it is God's will for every person to be saved. Now just because that's what He wants doesn't mean that's what's going to happen. We understand that. Can I just say that if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, make today the day of salvation. This is where you need to, don't, don't worry about the next step until you get your salvation settled. I think the most important decision that an individual has to make is where they're going to spend eternity. What is more important than going to heaven? When I got saved, I got saved because I was afraid of going to hell. Can you imagine going to hell for all of eternity? That's a long time. I was frightened because of that. And I want you to think in those terms, think in terms of eternity. If you were to die today and you were to stand before God and He were to say, why would I let you into my heaven? What would you say? 
Well, preacher, I'm a good person. Well, I wish there was more good people on this earth, but that's not what gets us into heaven. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God doesn't want us to show up in heaven with our thumbs underneath of our, our suspenders and say, hey, I got here because of me. I got here because I got baptized. I got here because I was a church member of the Spring Creek Baptist Church. I got here because I did this and I did that. I got here because of me. That When we get to heaven, there's going to be, it's, it's going to be a big, massive worship service because of Him, not because of us. You cannot get saved on your own merit, but only through the blood of Jesus Christ. A person needs to recognize that they're a sinner and repent of their sins and come to Christ by faith. That's what the Bible teaches us. Once we get salvation saved, what's next? I believe it's God's will for every person to be baptized. I think that's part of the will of God. I think it is the will of God for every Christian to be baptized. Baptism doesn't save us. We understand that. It is a picture of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I also believe that it is God's will for every one of us to pray. We are told to pray forevermore. I believe that it is the will of God for every, for every child of God to read their Bibles. What am I dealing with? I'm talking about brushing our teeth this morning. I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking about some big grand thing, am I? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What, am I, uh, what I'm talking about this morning is doing those things that we know we all ought to be doing. It is the will of God for every child of God to go to church. Amen? Y'all are getting quiet this morning. Y'all need more coffee. I think it's the will of God for every child of God to be a tither. If you're not tithing, you're robbing God. Amen? I have found the three tithers in here. I believe that it is the will of God for every child of God to give to missions. I believe it is the will of God for every child of God to live a holy, sanctified life. That means there are things that we ought not be involved in. Amen? Be ye holy, for I am holy. That's what the Word of God says. Somebody say an amen over here. I like this side better. I believe it's the will of God for every child of God to try to win other people to the Lord. To be concerned for souls. That I, they, I'm talking about brushing our teeth this morning. I'm talking about doing those things. If we want God's direction for our lives and we're, we're looking for that big grand thing, then we need to do what we know to, we have to do next. And if we are obedient to the light that we are given, God will show us what we are to do next. He will direct our steps. My challenge this morning, to not just to the seniors, but to each and every one of us, is to surrender to the will of God. To say like Christ did, not my will, but thine be done. What is God's will? To do those things we know we ought to be doing. He will show us what we are to do next. There's a problem. Sometimes our heart gets in the way. Doesn't it? My heart gets in the way. My flesh gets in the way. The scripture says a man's heart deviseth his way. Well, if I would have gotten my way of doing things, I wonder what would have happened. Probably not what God wanted to happen. When I was y'all's age, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to go to Pensacola Christian College and study to be a basketball coach. My dream was to replace Gary Williams as the coach of the Maryland Terrapins. That was my dream. You, you laugh. You, back in the day, I used to be fast, and I, I, I actually could jump pretty high. I could play when I was young. I can't now. But that was my dream. If I would have directed, if I would have found my own way, I probably would not have gotten far. 
probably would have made a wreck of my life. Because sometimes our heart gets in the way. We look at circumstances and we make plans off of existing circumstances. All those painful circumstances. We think about Job's wife, and I'm not trying to pick on Job, Job's wife. I have a message on, on Mrs. Job to consider. But as we, we look at Job and his wife, what did she say? She said, curse God and die. Boy, what kind of an encourager she is, right? But those were her kids too. Those were her things too. We, we, always, we always feel sorry for Job and we, and we, we ride hard on, on Mrs. Job. But why did she say, curse God and die? Because of the painful circumstances. Did God allow those things to happen in her life? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But we make a lot of decisions based off of how much something hurts. And we can avoid the will of God because of, because of pain in our lives. And we say, we don't want that pain. We look at fearful circumstances. I was reading my Bible this morning, and, and in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, I want you to look at this this morning. We make decisions because of fear. One of our seniors this morning spoke about fear, and fear is a real thing, and she talked about how she gives her fear to the Lord, and praise the Lord for that, amen? 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 7. Look at verse number 5. For when we were coming to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings. Within were, what's that word? You know what Paul said? He dealt with fear. If we allow fear to, di to dictate our, our direction in life, we will not grow to be the Christian that God saved us to be. Paul didn't allow that. In fact, he says in verse number 8, For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent, though I did repent. For I, I perceive that the same epistle had, uh, hath made you sorry, uh, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. And here's, here's what I'm looking at. Even though Paul faced fear, he still continued on in the will of God for his life and helped that church. We ought not allow fear to dictate our circumstances. The scripture teaches us, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has everything under control, under His control. Do not allow fear to dictate what you want to, what you're going to do in life. In other words, don't allow fear to dictate whether or not you're going to obey God. For me, and I'll just be transparent if I can, moving down here was a fearful thing. Ruth Ann, we had to sell a house in this market. We had that house for 10 years. That means in 20 years I could have had that house as my own and I wouldn't have to worry about it. These were things that were going on in my head. I'm telling you, as, a, as somebody that wants to provide for his home and for his family, these are things. I had fears and apprehensions about coming, coming down here. Do not allow fear to keep you out of the will of God because you will not grow. He talks about different heart issues, different circumstances. There are happy circumstances. You say, what do you mean by that? You realize that if everything is going well, we'll say, what's the point? And we'll let things slide. Sometimes we're more, we're more faithful to God when there are troubles and trials in our lives. Isn't that true? 
when we're facing happy circumstances, sometimes we, we say, oh, what's the point? And we, we let down our guard and we let things slide. And think about King David this morning. The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 11, And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Reba. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. Why did he stay there? We could, we could you know, ponder that for a little bit. But let's just assume that everything in David's life was going you know, just hunky-dory. Everything was going great. He was just a happy person. Why, is he, why do I need, I'm just going to send Joab. I'll let him lead the army. The Bible says, and Uriah said unto David, the ark in, in Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open field. Who was there? Joab. Who should have been there? David. David, I believe, was out of the will of God. And because he was out of the will of God, he really messed up, didn't he? Let, let me just be plain, he fell into sin. He committed adultery and he committed murder. All because things were going great. And he allowed his happy circumstances to dictate. He did, in other words, he did what felt good. Boy, if it feels good to the flesh, we better check up. We better, we better make sure, is this what God wants? Sometimes we make plans not just off the circumstances, but off of others too. What, is, what, what are other people thinking? What are other people doing? We kind of take our own internal polls. What does this friend think? What do they feel? The Israelites made decisions like that, and they missed the will of God for their lives. In Numbers chapter 13, the Bible says, But the men that went up, with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report on the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land uh, through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it were men of great stature. And there, were, there we saw giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. And you finish reading the story, and you find out an entire nation missed the will of God because of an internal poll system. What do people think? What do people think? No, we need to know, we want to know, what does God think? You say, how can I know what God wants me to do next? You brush your teeth. You read your Bible. You pray. You be faithful to church. You tithe. You give to missions. You do those things that you know that God wants you to do. You brush your teeth. That's what you do. Don't worry about the grand decisions in life. I believe the grand decisions in life take care of themselves if we, take, if we follow the small decisions in life. If we're willing to obey God with these, what, we, what we're saying, small things. And by the way, reading your Bible is not a small thing. It's, I'm, just, I'm looking at how we look at things, how we judge things. We look at the will of God, the specific will of, a will of God. Does God want me to be fill in the blank? No, here's what God wants you to do. He wants you to be a faithful Christian. He wants you to pray and read your Bible, be faithful to church and all those other things that we mentioned. If we want God to direct our steps, then we need to brush our teeth. You see, God has established a pattern for us to follow. The Bible says, for we are His workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We're His workmanship. When you build something, you're following a pattern, aren't you? The Bible says, for even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps. You see, patterns are important to God. You can go back to Exodus chapter 25 and see how God instructed Moses to build the tabernacle, and he left a very solid, very detail-oriented pattern to follow because God is interested in patterns. He's established a pattern for us to live our lives. 
We've been dealing with that this morning, talking about reading our Bibles and praying, etc. Those are patterns that God has left in His Word, in His, in His law, how we should live our lives. You realize that God has left a pattern for the church? God has left a pattern for marriage and for the home. God has even left a pattern for how to work, how to be an employer and how to be an employee. God has left a pattern on priorities. God has left a pattern on, on being a child. And God has left a pattern on, on being a holy individual. And all these God has left a pattern. He's established a pattern. Our problem stems from when we avoid God's pattern. For our lives. Well, that doesn't mean what it, that that's your interpretation, preacher. And there is no private interpretation. We'll say things that God doesn't care just as long as everything is just kind of done for his glory. God does care. God doesn't, God understands all, all that love, all that matters is that we love God. No doubt about it, loving God's important because Paul said, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. He's saying, look, e even though that I have these gifts and these talents, all of these things mean nothing if I don't have charity. Listen, loving God's important, but you know what God said? If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, you follow the pattern that I have established for your life. You want to know about that big grand thing that you're supposed to do? Then brush your teeth. Follow God's pattern. Obey the Lord in it. So what do we do? We need to cultivate a heart that wants to follow God. This is where the battle comes in with the heart and with the flesh. There are so many things out there that pull us away from the Lord. We need to cultivate a heart that follows God. We do that by loving God and loving His work. We do that by loving God and loving God's Word. We do that by regularly, listen, talking about the good things of God. Listen to me. Yes, there are burdens. And my friend, there are even critics, but there are victories. And I think it does us well to talk about the good things of God. If we want to establish a heart to follow God, then we need to talk about the good things of God. I think we need to honor God's servants. I don't think we need to tear down the servants of God. God has ears too. We spend so many, so, many, so many hours at home roasting the servants of God. God has ears. If you roast the servant of God in your house, listen to me, you are cultivating not just in your heart a, a heart of indifference, but also in your children's hearts. You want to cultivate a, a heart that follows God? Listen, I think you need to listen to good preaching. You know why? Listen. Preaching stirs the heart. Pastor Sexton said, preaching cranks the engine. I love preaching, not just because I'm a preacher and this is what I get to do, but I just love preaching. I love to turn on preaching throughout the week and just, just listen to preaching. Listen, there, there are a lot of things. We've got a lot of choices in this life about what to allow in our eye gate, in our ear gate. Ear gate. May we choose to hear regularly the preaching of the Word of God. My friend, we've got access to it today, don't we? We've got YouTube. You can get on the Internet and find, find a preacher. I'll tell you what, if you choose to miss church, you're not choosing to listen to preaching. I'm just saying. Just, just, just say, you know what, I need preaching in my life. God uses the foolishness of preaching. He uses that. I think if we're going to cultivate a heart that follows God, I think we need to get involved in it. There's no better classroom than being involved. Oh, I don't know how to do this, and I don't know how to do that. Just get involved. I guarantee you'll learn. You want to cultivate a heart that follows God? Just follow God. 
just surrender and give God your life and say, God, even though I have these, or these are my plans, you know what? I'm going to set aside my plans and I am going to follow you. I am going to dedicate my life to you because you are my Savior and you deserve everything. You've given everything. You deserve everything. I am going to give you my life. You need to brush your teeth. Don't worry about the big things. You just do the everyday things. Just do the boring things. Just do the upkeep things. And God will show you what to do. Light obeyed will always bring more light. Light disobeyed shuts off the light. Let's brush our teeth this morning. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We sing a song from time to time that says, wherever he leads, I'll go. But is that true? He leads us to doing some pretty basic things. He leads us to read our Bibles and pray and go to church and all of those types of things. My challenge this morning is a simple one. Do those things that you know you ought to be doing. And just give your life to God from there on out. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I pray that you would help us during this time of invitation. In Jesus' name, every head bowed, every eye closed. Let's all stand to our feet. Piano's going to begin playing. The Lord spoke to your heart this morning. The altar's open. Are you doing those things you ought to be doing? Are you obedient to the light that you're given? Do you do those things? Are you... Are, you, are there some, is there some area in your life you're holding back on? Do not hold back on God. Don't worry about the big things. Those big things I've learned will take care of themselves. Don't hold back on God. Do the everyday things. Brush your teeth every day. You know, if you don't read your Bible every day, you'll, you'll know. And after a while, everybody else will know. Just like prayer. Just like being faithful to God at church. Being a soul winner. The everyday things. The upkeep things. These things are important to God. These are His pattern. Amen. I hope the Lord spoke to your heart here this morning. Don't forget, we've got uh, the, the seniors next door. and Let's go spend some time with them, and then we'll meet back here. Please be faithful. We'll meet back here at 1 o'clock, and we're going to talk more a little bit about uh, David and Goliath. Amen? So let's be faithful to the house of God. Tony, would you dismiss us?